R-H-O-N-G star Teresa Gudis is spilling the tea on all of the delicious prison food she dined on while she was locked up. There have been so many horror stories about what inmates have to eat while incarcerated. Yet Teresa is telling a completely opposite story. Read on for more details. R-H-O-N-J Teresa Gudis spills tea on delicious prison food. Teresa Gudis went to prison prior to her now ex-husband, Joe Gudis. This was done so that one parent would always be at home with their four daughters. R-H-O-N-J continued to film despite Teresa's incarceration, which lasted 11 months. Though she loves to cook and has written her own cookbooks, she is now sharing an interesting detail. Contrary to popular belief, prison food was not all that bad, as she has recently disclosed. According to People, the podcast host dished on the delights she ate while behind bars and how she cooked for others around her. Teresa shared her prison foodie gossip while on the Dax Holt and Adam Glynn Hollywood Raw podcast. They questioned the author and reality star about chowing down in prison, and this is what she had to say. So what exactly did she cook, and moreover, how did Teresa manage to make meals behind bars? As she explained, she would cook for around 200 inmates with the meals being prepped from whatever they were given on any given day. She was particularly good at chicken stir-fry but went on to gush about banana muffins. As time has gone by, Teresa Judas feels much freer to chat about life behind bars. More so, she is truly grateful that the people she was with were gems. They were educated and it was a great batch unlike what Todd Chrisley talks about. He claims he lives on tuna and peanut butter, which is the direct opposite of Teresa's experience. Innocent still. Despite everything being lush and plush, that our ishong star still says that she is innocent and the judge attempted to make an example out of me. Getting thrown behind bars was a shock for Teresa Judas, but she believes that the judge heard her co-stars and went with that narrative. Sounds like the same old Teresa but with a very special and beautiful take on prison. Do you think everything was as pleasant as she claims or is she trying to rewrite history? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I think people have this preconceived notion that prison food is bland and tasteless. Teresa began, leaning in with a conspiratorial tone. But let me tell you, there were some dishes that were downright delicious. I never expected to find culinary gems behind bars, but life has a funny way of surprising you. Teresa went on to describe some of her favorite prison meals, recounting the inventive ways her fellow inmates transformed basic ingredients into mouth-watering creations. We had these limited resources, but the women in there were like culinary wizards. They could turn the simplest things into culinary masterpieces, she exclaimed. One surprising revelation was Teresa's fondness for the prison pizza, which she claimed was better than some of the pizzas she had tasted in the outside world. I know it sounds crazy, but there was something about that pizza. The way they seasoned it and the creativity with the toppings. It was a slice of comfort in an unexpected place, she admitted, her eyes reflecting a genuine appreciation for the unexpected joys she discovered. As we delved into the specifics of prison food, Teresa couldn't help but laugh about the infamous spread, a communal meal created from items available in the commissary. We would pool our resources and come up with these feasts. It was like a potluck, but with a prison twist. Mac and cheese, ramen noodles, and all sorts of snacks turned into a banquet that brought us together, she reminisced. Teresa Giudice's tales of prison gastronomy painted a picture of camaraderie and resourcefulness, challenging the conventional narrative surrounding incarceration. Food has this incredible power to bring people together, no matter where you are, she reflected. In those moments we weren't just inmates. We were a makeshift family sharing a meal and finding joy in the little things. Despite the challenging circumstances that led Teresa to experience prison life, she spoke with gratitude about the unexpected lessons she learned. It was a tough time, no doubt, but looking back, I can appreciate the moments of connection and the resilience of the human spirit. Food played a big part in that, bringing a sense of normalcy to an otherwise challenging situation. As the interview concluded, Teresa Gudis left us with a newfound appreciation for the role food can play in even the most unexpected places. Her candid revelations about the unexpected delights of prison cuisine showcased a different side of her personality, one that embraced resilience, camaraderie, and the ability to find joy in the most unlikely circumstances. 
In the end, it was a reminder that life's flavors can surprise us.